The Zumwalt class destroyers are some of the most ambitious warships in the history of American shipbuilding. The railgun, weaponized lasers, and the most advanced supersonic missiles are just a handful of the capabilities that were predicted to be on the ship. Even today, however, the fleet has yet to find a clear-cut purpose for it. So then what was the main obstacle for Zumwalt exactly? Was it the ambition, or rather, the high cost? The Zumwalt is an innovative, multi-purpose US Navy destroyer, developed with stealth technology. It was designed to support infantry from the sea, counter enemy aircraft, and strike strategically important targets on the ground. Ships belonging to the Zumwalt class are defined as destroyers, but in size they are significantly larger than any other existing active destroyer or cruiser within the US Navy. This is further proven by their displacement of more than 15,600 tons of water and a total length of 610 feet. This makes it one of the largest modern non-aircraft carrying warships in the world being 64% larger than the 9,500-ton cruisers and destroyers of the Navy, the Aegis. One of the first noteworthy differences between the Zumwalt and other ships is its unusual appearance. The ship inherited this look as a legacy from the military's DD-21 program, also known as the Destroyer for the 21st Century. From within this framework was chosen the design of the Tumblehome class, which implied a decrease in the ship's signature on the radar. For this purpose, the hull of the ship was narrowed above the waterline, while still working to maintain its stability. Additionally, when modeling the ship, a wave-penetrating hull with thin, sharp outlines and low frontal resistance was taken as a basis. In the case of Zumwalt specifically, this also contributed to a decrease in the effective scattering area. The relatively low side, gun mount barrels, and the mast, capable of being concealed in the hull, were some other innovations made for the sake of the destroyer's invisibility. As an additional measure of stealth, ferrite paint was utilized, which has partial radio wave absorbing properties. Due to such technical modifications and angular design, the radar's cross-section of the vessel was reduced by a factor of more than 50. This is unlikely to make it completely invisible to enemy detection, but it will still nevertheless be able to significantly reduce the actual dimensions of the destroyer on enemy radar screens. Thus, according to a representative of the NAVC command, the cross-section of the destroyer is more like the cross-section of a fishing vessel. And this is despite the fact that it is actually 40% larger than the destroyers of the Arleigh Burke class. Many of the functions of this innovative ship were developed as part of the DD-21 program, based on the VGAS, Vertical Gun for Advanced Ships. The initial plans of the US Navy included the construction of 32 Zumwalt class destroyers, with an estimated service life of 50 years. After some time passed, this number was forced to be reduced down to 24 units, then to 16, and eventually to mere 7 ships. As a result, only 3 such destroyers were built, mostly due to the unjustifiably high cost of the latest experimental technologies with which they wanted to equip vessel. In January 2009, the Government Accounts Chamber announced that out of 12 key technologies used in the Zumwalt Destroyer class, only 4 were fully developed, and 6 technologies at that time were only just approaching maturity. 5 of them could not even become fully usable until they were installed on ships. So then, what exactly was on the list of this futuristic outfit? The main requirement was the previously mentioned stealth capabilities of the vessel. In order to perfect them, engineers spent countless hours trying to make the Zumwalt's acoustic signature identical to the Los Angeles class submarines. According to them, the water rate on the sides, together with the passive supply of cold air to the structure, which combines the radar mast and the exhaust pipe, significantly reduces the infrared signature of the destroyers. 
The cockpit, comprising two to three inch thick composites set between layers of carbon fiber, also contained a variety of sensors and advanced electronics, all to better facilitate stealth. But already with the third ship in this US Navy class, they had to make a cheaper steel wheelhouse, due to the inexpediency of spending. Before long, the usefulness of the stealth function in the ship was called into question, since the role of the destroyers, after all, was to provide naval fire support. The ship, therefore, was set for a presence in crowded coastal waters, where it would instead be visible to the naked eye, just like other surface ships when they begin to fire off their cannons. Another design innovation is how the tumble home case was formed. It was supposed to contribute to the improved utility of the ship, and its ability to overcome obstacles, but it instead became the subject of disagreement between military experts. Many of them believed that because of the waves coming at the ship from behind, it could heal and lose its stability, as the stern would come out of the water and could subsequently turn over. Although those who have personally visited the vessel referred to its sturdiness as impressive, it did not greatly assist the viability of the project. The Zumwalt was armed with a revolutionary artillery system called the Advanced Gun System, two of which were installed on ships. They consisted of a state-of-the-art 155mm cannon and a special artillery projectile, the Long Range Land Attack Projectile, LRLAP, which is a missile whose warhead contains a 24-pound explosive charge inside. The destructive range of such projectiles was originally supposed to be up to 100 nautical miles, with a circular probable deviation of approximately 50 meters. Down the road, the hitting distance was adjusted to 84 miles, and later to 63 nautical miles. At the same time, this shell storage system was fully automated. It held up to 750 rounds, providing up to 10 rounds per minute from a single barrel. Thanks to the water cooling system, overheating was avoided. The number of rounds was also later reduced to 460 until eventually there were only 300. Employing the MRSI firing tactics, the total firepower of the turrets gave the destroyer an initial volley equivalent to that of 12 M198 howitzers. In 2016, the Navy cancelled the purchase of LRLAP, stating that the cost of the projectile had increased to somewhere between $800,000 and $1 million, due to a reduction in the number of Zumwalt-class ships. Although earlier, Lockheed had lowered the price of shells down to $35,000. With this, they wanted to start introducing alternative ammunition. But due to the fact that the AGS was specifically designed for LRALP projectiles, it would have had to spend far too much money on modification just to be able to use other projectiles on board Zumwalt. Furthermore, they would not have had time to be implemented before the first destroyer entered service in 2018. Closer to the launch of the third Zumwalt, DDG-1002, the Navy said it was considering potentially mounting a railgun in place of one of its 155mm cannons. This is possible due to the powerful Rolls-Royce turbine generators, which are capable of producing 78 megawatts or 105,000 horsepower, of electricity. This is enough to power more than 50,000 homes. Using a universal turbine generator electric motor method, one identical to that on submarines of the Ohio class. Unfortunately, in 2021, the US Navy ceased funding for the idea of a railgun installation and does not currently intend to continue work on it as far as destroyers are concerned. Following past disappointment with futuristic weapons, the Navy in the spring of 2021 requested information on the possibility of potentially installing hypersonic missiles on board the Zumwalt. However, due to the enormous size of the missiles, they would simply not fit into the VLS tubes. 
Due to the abandonment of expensive ammunition, the Navy proposed replacing the two unused AGSs with three-piece improved payload modules to fulfill the role of deterring a rapid strike. The complexity of the Zumwalt class systems meant that over 1,200 designers and developers from 30 companies had to create the brain of the ship. They wrote 14 to 16 million lines of coding for the TSCEI infrastructure, primarily based on General Electric FANUC embedded systems PPC7A and PPC7D as well as Linux Works, Linux OS, RTOS. More than 35,000 signals monitor everything that happens on the ship. From the simple opening and closing of doors to the actual operation of the ship's power plants. All of this is passed through 16 different electronic module enclosures and an IBM blade server, filled with 235 electronic cabinets. It is the size of a train car and weighs a stunning 18 tons. The formed network provides seamless integration throughout all onboard systems, combining sensors and significantly improving and simplifying the work and planning of missions. Automation has reduced the number of crew members needed on board the Zumwalt down to 130. This is two times less than that of other smaller ships and, in theory, should have had a positive effect on the overall cost of the project. A little later, it became known that the ships of this class were set to go out on sea with 175 sailors on board, which exceeds the original goal but still requires 50% less personnel than the Arleigh Burke class that preceded it. Unfortunately, the breakdowns of such an ambitious vessel were not so far off. In November 2016, the DDG-1000's main power plant failed as it passed from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean via the Panama Canal. Seawater seeped into two of the six bearings connecting the ship's advanced induction inboard motors to its drive shafts, which caused them to fail and the Zumwalt collided into the canal walls. This led to some minor surface repairs. A little while later, while in the port of San Diego, a leak in the lubrication cooling system was also discovered, but many are still at a loss as to what exactly brought it about. A year later, as part of the tests, DDG-1000 was forced to return to the shipyard in Maine due to the failure of harmonic filters that protect sensitive electrical equipment from power fluctuations all of which would protect the ship from using the complex electrical network during high loads. In response to the incident, the Navy said that such repairs are not uncommon for first-class ships during the sailing period after construction. And it's not easy to disagree with them on this point. Most of the problems, however, arose with the cost of the Zumwalt class. After the number of destroyers had already been reduced to a mere 7 units, the Navy estimated the cost of their production at $16.4 billion. While a concurrent estimate by the Congressional Budget Office CBO, came in at $28.5 billion, a notable 75% more. When the Zumwalt class destroyer fleet was further reduced to three ships, the Navy allocated $2.6 billion to build the first two. By 2015, one such destroyer was already estimated at $4.4 billion, and the cost of all three exceeded $12.73 billion. If we then add the cost of research and development to this, it turns out that the total cost of manufacturing the Zumwalt exceeds $22.5 billion. It stands to reason that such a cost for ship production can make any taxpayer nervous. The cost of the ship, coupled with a number of other hastily made decisions, led to it not only becoming the subject of regular controversy, budget cuts, and changes to the original design, but also one of the biggest areas of compromise in the history of the US Navy. Today, the Navy wants to make destroyers a testing ground for the latest CPS hypersonic missile and revive the idea of installing lasers. But can the Navy satisfy its longing for technological innovation on Zumwalt-class ships without emptying the pockets of American taxpayers? What are your thoughts regarding the future of the Zumwalt-class? Let us know in the comments below!
Also, if you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video.